Well, we're definitely bringing the Zydeco to Philadelphia. Were you there this past weekend with the Curly Taylor show? Unbelievable. And the best thing was you got to learn how to dance because this is totally an interactive thing. And there's going to be so many concerts and so many opportunities for you to uh, get out on the floor. In fact, I don't know if you know this, but we have one coming up uh, tomorrow night as Rosie Ledette is going to be in Norristown. Uh, small space, but there'll be room for you on the floor. We're getting a chance to talk with Rosie Ledette right before her uh, gig right next door at the Alain Dancey Affair at the Social Club next door. She'll be setting up there in a moment, but uh, next door is, is Luz where we're at, and Rosie, Luz is famous for a zep. Yeah, I didn't think so, but it, it's think poor boy, it's something like that. Nice it's sort of our, our version of that. Um, where are you from? What which, which town are you from? I'm from a little little place called uh, Iota, Louisiana, and um, I was born in a smaller place, Church Point, Louisiana. Wow. <laughs> yeah, very small. And we've talked to so many people of uh, your age, younger, you know, sort of in the middle, not the old guard, who, who um, say uh, they were not into Zydeco growing up. Is that the case for you? No. My parents always would talk about, we're going to the French La La. The French like, no, nah, y'all go ahead on and go. Yeah. Yeah, they used to listen to uh, a lot of Clifton Chenier, you know, the older guys. And um, we never really, us kids, got into it too much. Yeah. No. What were you into? Rock and roll, baby. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and how, how did you get started? Well, um, my parents were gone on their weekendly trips uh, when I was about 16. And uh, my aunt and uncle used to go with them all the time. And that evening, my aunt was sick, so they had a seat. So it's like, oh, just come on with us. You'll have a good time. There'll be young kids there and stuff. And I decided to go. So. The legendary Busu Chavis was oh. on stage, you know? And oh my God, I just like flipped. I mean, there was people of every age. They were like little kids, teenagers, older people, and everybody was just having so much fun. That was just awesome, <laughs> you know? Did you see yourself doing that? It, it was, you were way too young. You know? No, but so. I just fell in love with the music though. I really did, right. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
Little Rosie. Little Rosie. Yeah, they call me Little Rosie. Yeah, they call me Little Rosie. Yeah, they call me Little Rosie. Listen, sweet as the flowers since the bay I was born. Cross me, but you better be wrong. I'm gonna tell you just like that song. Every rose has a thorn. What'd you say, Rosie? Rosie in the house tonight. Rosie, Rosie, what'd you say? Rosie in the house tonight. Oh yeah! Rosie in the house tonight. Stop that bye. Yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Little Rose, yeah, yeah. My life. Thank you. Okay, now let's go from that to picking up the accordion. <sighs> okay, well, that same night, uh, Morris Ledet, my ex husband, got up on stage with Boozoo and he sat in. I was like, wow, this is really cool. So, you know, and like about three or four dances later, he came over to the table and asked me to dance. I was like, I have no idea how to do it. So my parents pushed me, go, go, go dance. So I stumbled my way through a few. The next weekend, he was at the door again, come with me to the dance. And I guess about a year later, we ended up getting married. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he had a, a Zodico family band. He had his dad on the washboard, his first cousin on the drums, um, another cousin on the guitar, I think it was. And it was just, they played a lot of local things. So he, he and his father also did farm work, like most people in the country, you know. And while he would go to work in the mornings, I used to sneak his accordion. It was cassettes back then, no CDs. And I would just put one on and take the accordion and just kind of mimic what I heard for a few hours a day, you know, while he was gone. Put it right back in the same spot he had it, so he had no idea. So I guess about six months later, he came in for lunch and I didn't cook that day. <laughs> I said, no food, but let me show you this. So I played, um, it was morning train. Uh, John Delafosse's version, and he couldn't believe it. He said, you taught yourself how to play this dance. Well, a few songs, and so um, I started sitting in mm, about five songs on some of his shows, and um, about a year after that, we went to Maison de Soul. Which is a record mm -hmm. company. Yeah, yep. and uh, we uh, presented Mr. Floyd Swallow, great guy with um, a few songs I'd done, just a little demo, and asked him, you know, could he help us out, maybe do something, and he was all for it. He said, get her in the studio now, go. <laughs> so um, I recorded um, in 1994, the first one was Sweet Brown Sugar. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and that I, did really well. It did good. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Most of the time I was playing the whole show with my eyes closed. Like I, I couldn't look, it's like I'm a mess up, I'm a bust out laughing, do something crazy, but. You gonna mug me? I might gotta mug you. It's that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run a decent marathon. Thank you very much. Download Veely now.
This is how we rock. This is how we rock. This is how we, this is how we, this is how we rock. Chumming, 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 drumming. about the accordion but um had you been singing at all before that because uh, you're such a great singer and i always tell people i'm not a musician i'm not a singer i'm a nerdy writer <laughs> but i i get to you know i guess let people hear things i've written by singing them so um no my mom was in the choir for Oh, as long as I can remember, actually. And I used to pretend to sing with the choir just to go to the trips they used to go on, but I never really sang before. Nah. Just like dust 
So you started writing right from the beginning? I have been writing since I was about 12. Mm -hmm. I always did like to write. Well, and, and you, uh, you write a lot of kind of saucy tunes nowadays. Did you always do that or is that uh, more? <laughs> That's funny too, because when I did the first CD, I said, you don't have nothing a little different. <laughs> so, well, um, there's a lot of dog songs. I know there's a lot of animal tunes <laughs> with psycho music. I said I kind of wrote a spoof about a dog a song, and it's like, okay, let me hear that one. And that was it. Yep, that's the hit right there. Put it out. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. great. That's good. Well, that's how that happened. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Andre. 
as he do his thing. Officer Andre Nazari. What about you, Chucky? Be a little Chucky. Oh, come on, Chucky Chuck. And you've always, you've always played the French accordion, the, the s yeah. smaller one. Uh -huh. yeah. I played a double now too, and actually on this new CD I'm in the process of doing right now, I'm playing the triple now. Ah. I'm working my way up. <laughs> I'm curious, right from the beginning, watching a woman up on stage playing the accordion, um, that's unusual. I mean, I can think of Queen Ida, but they're not that many, are they? You know, I know of about a hand few a lot of them come and go, you know, they'll give it up for a bit, but there are some, but a lot of them just won't do it publicly. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Were you aware of Queen Ida? Yeah. yeah. I mean, she's the best. I, I got to catch one of her shows when I first got started, and she, and she said, a word of advice. Yes, ma'am. She said, you know, when you play these shows right now, especially when you're my age, I think she's the age I am now, mm -hmm. <laughs> and she said, you need, you, I know you're going to want to see all these new places and, you know, go around. But before that show, you need to get your rest. <laughs> said, because pulling that accordion for four hours long, you're going to be tired. So I took that, took that to mind. She's right. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to right. say, I, you see a lot of sweating going on with uh, the, this, the males with the, the big piano accordions. Too. Oh, my God. Those yeah. are so heavy. Yeah. <laughs> We have no 
Did you immediately start playing outside of Louisiana or did you just mostly play there at the beginning? Uh, for about the first two years when I first got started, it was basically Louisiana, Texas, you know, surrounding areas like that. But then I signed on with Piedmont Talent Agency uh, out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and they put me on the road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like nonstop after that. <laughs> What is the difference in dances in Louisiana and say here we are in Philadelphia? Well, there's not a lot of a difference because there's all dancers, they all dance really good. I personally can't dance a step. Really? Honestly, I cannot. I'm the only Creole person I know that can't dance. But yeah, I mean, it's the same um, closeness between the band and the dancers. So it's a lot like home, with, especially with the dance organizations. Now I'll do uh, festivals and things out of the state or country, and it's a lot different. People just pretty much jump around and do their own thing, right. you know. But like at these dances, it's, you know, the couples doing that side of code. Absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. How long have you been coming to the uh, long dance? Oh, wow. Yeah. Almost from the beginning, so about 15, 16 years, yeah. back and forth, different, yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
Something, something in there. So okay, you, we've already established you're a country girl. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> but I understand you you spend part of your time in New York. Oh yeah, about half of the year. But now, um, I basically relocated. You know, a lot of times I would go back home to the summer. I still have my home there, and my daughter and well, it was both my granddaughters still live in the family home. But now, my oldest granddaughter just came up to New York to live with me now. So, ah. Yeah. So it must be more of an event to go back home and play. It, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it used to be a big event to come up here, but now it's like, wow, I gotta get tickets. <laughs> it's like we gotta get back that way. It's kind of like that for the jazz festival, you know? Gotta fly now. 
Well, people got to be glad to see you too. That oh, was, that was so nice. nice. <laughs> it's nice to go home.
Thank you. What are some of the unusual places <laughs> that you've uh, you've been asked to play? Oh wow, I've played uh, birthday parties. Of course, that's not to be. I had weddings. Yeah. I've played divorce parties. I've played. Uh, <laughs> I'm even next. <laughs> I play funerals. I will not play a funeral. Uh, I just can't do it. But I've been asked to play it. Wow. Uh, some garages. Um, I got a new uh, Harley party, you know? <laughs> it's, hey, it's all right. Everything is a party back home, especially. Everybody having a good time tonight. Is everybody having a good time tonight? Here's the D, Miss Rose Ledette, got to go play boys. Like they say, we lay say bon ton roulé, you know? <laughs> All the time, make the good time roll, baby. Wait up.
Because y'all promised me a milkshake. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is, yeah. the milkshake. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Here. Thank you, darling. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh, my God. It looks great. <laughs> and I know better not to drink that before the show. I know better. I'm going to do it Little girl called Cabina. Right <laughs> Rosie in the house tonight. 